Well, hey, good morning. We're going to wait uh, about 60 more seconds to let people join us. Um, but while we're doing that, what I want to do first is just make sure the audio is coming through for you guys. If you can see my screen and if you can hear me, uh, go ahead and type something in the chat window. Let us know where you're calling in from. I always like to find out where the furthest away person's located. So if you can hear us, go ahead and uh, give us a shout out there in the chat and let us know where you're coming from. See if anyone's typing in there. Oh, okay, so somebody can hear us. That's good. okay. All right, guys. It looks like the screen for some reason is showing like the second monitor. So give us one second. We're gonna make. We're gonna try and fit on the second monitor so it's not confusing looking, and then we'll get going. And we're back. Okay, so we've got a couple people typing in, letting us know that you can hear us just fine. So we're going to actually kick things off here. Um, let me introduce myself. I'm Greg Jenkins, and I'm a consultant and live trainer here. And sitting next to me. Hi, I'm Paul Sokol, and I'm the Campaign Builder Mad Scientist. We're both pretty excited to be here this morning. Right below our names, you can actually also see our Twitter handles. Mine is at Infusion Greg, and Paul is at Voyix. Um, we do tweet out some resources and uh, ninja tricks from time to time, so I recommend you do follow us. Actually, uh, going to have a couple of bonus items at the end of today's session as well that we're going to tweet. So go ahead and follow us there. We appreciate any sort of engagement you want to offer. Yeah, and if you have any questions, you know, call us out. We'll be more happy to reply. And uh, if you want to see any other previous tweets and things like that, just search for the hashtag of IS Mastermind. Perfect. Okay, uh, we got a couple of small housekeeping items to run through before we, uh, before we launch into today's content. First thing I want to talk about is the Virtual Academy. So you're dialed in currently to the Mastermind webinars. Uh, those are where we go a little bit more advanced um, and we dive in deeper on some unique subjects. Uh, the Virtual Academy is more of a uh, fundamental and cursory level type knowledge. We do have uh, recorded webinars on a variety of topics that are available at that URL you see there, help.infusionsoft.com slash academy. Those are totally free to you as Infusionsoft users, and we do recommend you use them um, to bring new employees up to speed or just to revisit anything you may have questions about. And then we also have Infusionsoft University if you're looking for a little more in-depth hand-holding. This is the opportunity to work with uh, our live trainers for either two or four days and uh, really get deep into the app. The next one that we've got coming up, the next one that we've got coming up is going to be in Orlando. And these seats do fill up pretty quickly, guys. Uh, there were still availabilities this morning when we checked. Um, but again, this is going to, it always fills up pretty quickly because what, they can only fit about 80 in there, Greg? Yeah, we usually cap at about 80. If we do them on the road, it depends on the venue we're hosting it at. That's I'm true. actually one of the presenters at Infusionsoft University, and it's a ton of fun. I mean, it's four jam-packed days. Uh, we get a lot of people coming out just to refresh things or if they want to brush up on what's been released in the past year um, or if they have a new employee that they want to bring up to speed. It's, a, it's really a versatile event, um, and it's, it's a good fit for most people. Cool. So let's keep moving along. The next thing we want to show you guys is uh, basically how the mastermind calls work. So each week, 
we choose from the list of uh, topics what's been voted up, um, and then we present on the suggestions that you guys have uh, have made. And you actually get votes if you go to mastermindwebinars.uservoice.com. That's where you can uh, suggest topics as well as vote for others. If the topic that you voted for uh, gets presented, uh, you get that vote back, so you can redistribute it or reallocate it. Um, I also want to point out that uh, all the attendees are on mute here to help this uh, run smoothly, but we do have the chat dialogue open, so we're happy to answer questions. Uh, we won't always be able to answer them as they come in, but just know that uh, at the end, Paul and I have some time carved out to uh, kind of revisit what you may have asked, and we're going to make sure that we uh, take care of all the issues that pop up or any questions or concerns you have. Absolutely, and so we're, we're definitely going to we're definitely going to get all the content of this webinar taken care of in the hour, so that way if people have time constraints, we can respect that. And then we may go a little over answering some Q and A. Um, so uh, I don't think there's really anything else. Let's let's get into it. Let's have some fun. Let's party. Cool. So this is uh, today's subject or title: effectively leveraging your true social network. And I want to show you guys where that comes from. This is the actual suggestion, um, verbatim, that we chose to uh, tackle today. Show us how to add tags onto the social widgets and better integrate social and Infusionsoft. Adding a tag onto the social widgets in a broadcast email to see who is sharing or clicking through the social sites. Okay, so that's the, the, ta the topic that we chose to tackle. And on the surface level, you know, just reading through this, it didn't seem all that advanced. It didn't seem something that was really you know, a whole mastermind call, it might just be, hey, here's how you add the tags. But when Paul and I were talking about it, we realized that there's probably a couple more layers here that not everyone really understands. And so we do have a, we're going to answer that question, but we're also going to answer a few more that uh, kind of are the natural progression here. And we're both really excited about what we've got for you. Uh, the first thing I want to get out of the way is what we're not talking about is Grow Social. Uh, Grow Social is a product Infusionsoft offers. It's a additional cost. I think it's uh, about 30, 39, 35, something like that, something like that a month. Um, if you are interested, Grow Social is a great tool in terms of managing your social media pre uh, presence. So it's a suite basically of web-based tools that allows you to run campaigns. It allows you to uh, you know pretty up your Facebook page and your Twitter pages and schedule posts, that sort of thing. It's a basically an interface that allows you to really manage your social presence. That's not what we're addressing here today, although Grow Social is a, is a great option. If you're interested in that, I recommend checking it out. You can uh, visit growsocial.com slash sign up, and we actually do offer a free trial on that one. So if you want to check that out, I recommend uh, hopping on there, getting the free trial going, and seeing if it's a good fit for you. So that's what we're not talking about. So what are you talking about today? Well, uh, here's our agenda. We're going to run through basically the social widget. I'm going to show you everything there is to know about it. And then we're going to touch on a social, the social share form, which not everyone knows exists. Um, and then, Paul, you're going to show them a social campaign and how to take that to the next level. And then towards the end, we've got a bonus ninja move for everyone, so a little, little, uh, little trick to put in their back pocket and maybe wow some customers uh, this afternoon. Perfect. So in the drag and drop builder, we're talking about sending a broadcast. What I have here is just a screenshot. You can see that we've got the social snippet. There are a lot of snippets up there. This one often gets overlooked, but basically you just grab that snippet, drag it out, and drop it in the email wherever you want to include it. What's going to happen is you're going to see this window pop up asking you to configure it. You've got sharing options and follow options. Basically, sharing options, you want to enable those if you want people to be able to share your content with their network. Follow options, you want people to follow you, um, you know, on, on Facebook or on Twitter or follow your blog, you can encourage them to do that as well. You might check all of those boxes and enable all of them, or you might only check what's appropriate. Once you uh, click this little drop down here, it says, if clicked, then, and you can choose apply remove tag. So the question was, how do I apply tags on the social widget if somebody wants to, if somebody wants to track Hey, are they sharing? Are they tweeting? Are they Google Plusing my stuff? And, and one thing I want to point out about this is that the, the question was specifically tagging from a broadcast email. You're looking at the social snippet in, in a broadcast. That's why you have that drop down. If you use this social snippet inside a campaign, um, you, you would not have that drop down. Rather, you would perform, quote, actions using a link click goal. And that's what we're going to cover later on. So just to clarify that. That's... If, 
you know. That's a good here. distinction. The screenshot I've got here is specifically for when you're configuring the social snippet in a broadcast. Mm -hmm. It will look different if you're configuring it in a campaign. And we are going to get to that. Yeah, Paul? Yep. And that's how you apply a tag to a broadcast. And that's the mastermind call. Have a great day, guys. <laughs> that's, that's all we've got for you. So we've answered the questions. And uh, let's move no, on. No, no. Please stay. Please stay. Um, okay. So you got two options there, sharing and, of course, following. So, yeah, you want to encourage your tribe to share some content. Um, and, you, of course, you want to encourage new prospects to follow you. Um, what I want to point out about that is those aren't always the same. So, of course, in an email... Uh, a lot of people don't know this. You can actually include the share snippet or the social snippet multiple times. You can see I've got it in there three different times, and I've configured it three different ways. So up here, right by my brand, maybe I'm just encouraging them to follow me. Hey, connect with me on Twitter. Connect with me on uh, Facebook. Down here, maybe I had a compelling article, so I want them to, to really like or tweet or, or, or share this on Google Plus uh, with their networks because the content was good. And then down here by my signature or closing line, I've got all those options. So right there, you know, a lot of people don't recognize that the social snippet can be used in that many different ways to really have that much of an impact. I also want to show you what happens when this email gets delivered. So what I have here is a screenshot of my inbox. And if this email shows up, I've got the like, tweet, and Google Plus one there. Um, if you click on Google Plus... It's going to, uh, that, that's what shows up in their uh, feed. Is it called a feed on Google Plus? Uh, yeah, when you're looking at someone's profile, you can see what things have a plus one. And so that's what it looks like when you plus one it. Um, yep. You do have to, we learned this yesterday, if you want people to be able to see the plus ones you have on your Google Plus profile, you have to enable it. So just a little side note if, for the Google Plus users out there. So if, if that's the case and you're encouraging Google, Google Plus is there, you might want to let your, uh, your customer base or your prospects know that that has to be enabled as well. A couple things I want to point out there is the subject line shows up very prominently. An email from Greg Hooray, you can see right below that, that's the subject line I had written for that email. So just be conscious um, as, you're, as you're drafting your emails, uh, if you're encouraging shares on a specific piece, that subject line is going to be all that much more important. Okay, so next, if you click the Facebook Like button, this is what's going to show up in their, uh, on their Facebook activity feed. So you can see Gregory likes an email from Greg. Hooray. Again, and that subject line comes through, and you can see they've got a link there to click right through to it. Um, it also has a small image of the Infusionsoft logo. That's because that was the first image um, available there in the email. So just want you guys to be aware when somebody likes it on Facebook, this is what happens. And then lastly, if somebody chooses to tweet your content out, they do actually get to customize the tweet. So they're going to see a screen like this. Hey, I just read. It, it uh, pre-populates that. And then it has a link to the hosted version of the email. So, of course, they can adjust that and uh, get a little bit more specific with what they thought about it. But that's how the, the three shares are going to work for you. Okay. So I know people should encourage, or I know I should encourage people to share my content. Nothing super groundbreaking so far. If you're sitting there saying, all right, what else do you got, guys? Well, stick with me. We've got a couple more uh, tools for you. We're going to take it to the next level. How do I convert these people to, uh, or how, how do I convert these social viewers? And when we say convert, we're talking about how do we get those people to opt in? Okay, so my tribe is sharing an email. Great. People are clicking to look at it. Great. Wouldn't it be cool if I could organically build my list from the extended social network of my tribe. And that's actually a function built right into the software out of the box, and it, it's really not that well known. And so that's why when we were looking through these slides and, and kind of creating this presentation, we, were, we got really excited because we realized this, there's, a big, there's a big knowledge gap among our users of this very tool. And, yeah. and I think once you, once you see this in the next, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, it's really going to get the, the wheels in your head spinning. Yeah, so I can't emphasize enough that the real key here is, is putting together content that deserves to be shared. You Absolutely. Know, putting together stuff that is valuable enough that your, your prospects choose to share it with their network. You know, that's the real key here. It's not going to do you a whole lot of good if you're including, like in an email I have here, where there's not a whole lot of content, and you're just saying, like, tweet, or share this. Well, it doesn't work that way. You've got to put together something that is compelling in itself that has enough inherent value that people choose to share it with their network. So this is what the email looks like. 
um, as you're building it. What I want to point out is that layout and style button up there. So this is what Paul's referring to. A lot of people know, yeah, you can adjust the layout, you can change the header, you can change the sidebar, but what a lot of people overlook is this show form option down here at the very bottom. So if you enable that form, or if you enable the, that, that option, what it's going to allow you to do is select one of your forms that you've built and position it um, within your email or to the side of your email, but it only shows up on a share. So here's what happens. If you have that enabled, and I'm on Facebook, and I see, hey, Gregory liked an email, so maybe I click that link to, choose, to kind of see what Gregory liked. Well, instead of just seeing the email, now I also see a form, a lead capture form positioned right next to it. You can choose if you want it on the left or the right, but look at the content I've got there. It says, if you like the content your friend has decided to share and you'd like to receive these future updates directly to your inbox, then sign yourself up. So you, immediately you know that this person, if they're viewing this, they've, chose, they, they've decided, I want to see what my friend shared. And if, they, if their friend likes it, you've got some social proof immediately, and, and they're all the much more likely to, to opt in. Totally. This is, this is where I see a lot of people not necessarily misuse the social form, but they could be using it better. And by the way, if you're sitting here wondering, these are all slides, are you going to show me how to actually do this? Yes, we're about to get in the application in a couple of minutes. Just wanted to get all the slides out of the way, and then we'll have some fun on the app. Um, but you've got you to gotta recognize and, and remember that when people are viewing this email, you're pulling them out of their social feed. You know, they're on their Twitter feed. They're looking at G+. They're on Facebook. So you're actually pulling them to essentially this closed sales funnel. And we all know that good marketing and conversions is all about being relevant and targeted. So that's why when you use these social forms, you really want to talk directly to somebody that's coming to this view from a social channel. Um, and, there, and in this example, it's perfect. Hey, you're, if you like the content your friends shared, sign up yourself. Um, it's directly addressing that person. That's definitely going to help out with uh, you know conversions and increase the chance that when people view this, if they like it, they're going to put themselves on on the list too. Exactly. And hey, as Paul said, uh, we are going to ramp it up here for you. So let's take it to the next level. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to go ahead and ramp it up, guys. easy check check test 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 okay I got it Greg sorry about that guys no idea what happened we're kinda new to this whole technology thing so we'll get the hang of it yeah I just learned how to use a mouse the other day um, no but that was that was really weird it's a USB microphone and it just kinda stopped working but that's the cool thing about USB. You just unplug it, plug it back in, we're good to go. That's the troubleshooting school I went to. Okay. So uh, I guess it, it sounds like uh, the ramp it up slide is when the audio cut out. You didn't really miss anything. Um, what, what I was, before you get into the campaign, I was talking about uh, the philo it's really a, phil a, phil a, phil a philosophical conversation. Um, but I believe that broadcasts don't really exist anymore. By nature, the word broadcast, it, it, it infers a one-way communication to everybody. Um, when in reality, whenever we're doing, you know, even like a, an email newsletter or a one-off communication like that, we usually are trying to get something out of it. You know, maybe, you know, it's not always a sale. Maybe we're just, again, wanting people to share something socially. Um, maybe we want to track what they're doing. So in general, a, a broadcast is really just a one sequence, one email campaign. Uh, so that way it's much easier to track up, you know, to set follow-up and things like that. Yeah, I think I, I think I should clarify. I don't, I don't think what Paul's saying is that you should never send broadcasts again. I think what we're encouraging is that you start to think about them differently. Very seldom do you want to just send a message and that's the end of that message. If it's, you know, if, if, there's, if there's a next step, then what you're thinking about is a logical progression. And what we're, what we're bordering on is maybe that's not that, that broadcast is the first step in a campaign. So, you know, we're starting to make that connection to, to being a little bit more deliberate or a little bit more intentional about where that progression is going. That's all. Yeah, and, and if it helps, you can think of a broadcast as like a mini campaign. So maybe there's not a whole lot going, 
but again, maybe you have a link click goal and like a single follow-up email, something like that. So let's have some fun here. So we've set up a couple of things here. Uh, there's that social share form. We're going to show you how that works in a second. So here's a single broadcast sequence with a single email in here. It's that I believe it's the same email that you saw on the slides earlier. Pretty close. So what we've got here is the social snippet. What I'm going to actually do is let me just go ahead and delete this and we'll, we'll start from scratch because there's a lot of fun things you can do with this. So for example, you can choose multiple snippets in one. So I'm just going to leave the sharing options here. And remember, we don't have those drop downs because that slide we saw earlier was when you're in broadcast mode. Uh, and that's using legacy actions. This is, um, you know, the builder. So actions don't really exist. It's just goals and then stuff inside a sequence. Um, with the with the display options, you can actually change how they show up. Um, and I'm going to recommend turning the labels off. Um, the label is this thing. It'll either say share or like. So if I turn the label off, this allows me to give my own call to action and I, and I always recommend doing that just putting something above the fold especially if you're going to incentivize people for sharing which we'll, we'll talk about in a second so um, you know oops, let's probably get the mouse out of the way you know was this valuable um, do you know someone who needs to know this too you know share this with your friends using the buttons below And then I'd, you know, I'd bold it, center it, um, get rid of that space. And I even put a, put a little divider here so that way it's, it, there's a really clear, you know, distinction here. Uh, and so this is a lot better than just having the label that says, you know, share. And then conversely, you can do the exact same thing with, with the follow version of it. Uh, and I usually like to put these in the footer. Again, you can put these wherever you want. So I'm going to turn the sharing off, but I'm going to enable the follows. Now, with the follows, there's, there's two ways you can use it. You can actually connect your... Yeah, I don't have mine connected, but... If, uh, if you have a personal Facebook or Twitter, you can actually associate that with your Infusionsoft user and then you can select it from the drop down. Uh, you can also just select other and then put in uh, the URL of where you want them to go. So for example, facebook.com slash uh, Infusionsoft. If I wanted to point here, because it's a social snippet already for Facebook, I don't have to put the whole Facebook.com. I just put whatever's after the slash. And this is a question that I hear all the time because it, when you connect on your profile to your social networks, it does find your Facebook personal page, which a lot of people say, I don't want people to connect with me on my personal page, and we totally get you there. So what, all you have to do is just configure this so that you say other, and then whatever is after the slash on your Facebook business page. So it pre-populates Facebook.com slash, and then you're going to put in the extension there. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and then that's a good point. That That is a common mistake. And same thing with Twitter, you know. So it's, you know, Twitter.com slash Infusionsoft. You can just go ahead and throw it in like that. Um, and this brings up a really good point. You can have multiple different follows in there. So maybe... And uh, the blog URL is just a full URL, you know, so I can have a follow down here. This is following Infusionsoft, right? So we can throw in a little, hey, you know, follow Infusionsoft. Oop. Center it up, hold it up. So we can say, hey, go ahead and follow Infusionsoft. But then maybe I put another snippet in here, which is specifically, you know, follow Greg. Mm -hmm. So then I can just, I don't know your Facebook pages, but I know that you are Infusion Greg. Yeah, and just on that note, um, you might see if you're looking, I do have two Twitter handles. I just launched Infusion Greg. Uh, that's my work one. I, you can, you're more than welcome to follow me on both. My personal is Greg Jenkins 4, F-O-U-R. I do post a lot of uh, Infusionsoft related stuff there as well, but if you follow me there, you're going to also get uh, NBA stats and uh, <laughs> comedians retweeted it 
and uh, probably some water polo scores from around the country. So if you follow me there, you run that risk. But Infusion Greg <laughs> is is my is my work one. So so there you go. So we've got the ability to follow Greg on Twitter, but then also you can follow Infusion Saw. So um, that's how the the social snippets are working. So this is giving them the ability to share. This gives them the ability to follow. So the original question was, how do we tag off of that in a broadcast email? Well, we know that we're treating this as a mini uh, campaign, even though it's just you know one email sequence. So this is where we have our link click goals in here. And if you need a link click goal, just grab this indicate interest. Uh, this little symbol down here indicates that it's a link click. You can always double click on this, by the way. And you can change what the goal type is. So, so really, I could grab any of those goals and yeah. just change it and configure it to be tracking that link. Totally. So maybe this is visually more w what I want to convey so I can say, you know, this is the social share, for example. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll connect these. And talking about tagging here, you know, the, the, if we have any people here that used to use legacy, you're probably familiar with, you know, actions and things like that. Well, inside the campaign builder, and a quote, action is just a communication or a process. So for example, applying a tag. Um, and then we just take people from event to event or from goal to goal uh, using these sequences. So I could go ahead and do this if I wanted to give everybody the same tag. Maybe I just want to tag them social promoter. Uh, and then if I ever want to do you know, a launch or something, I can reach those people out specifically and say, hey, you've shared my stuff in the past. I'm going to send you something in a couple of days. I'd really appreciate it if you were to share it. Um, or you could, of course, have a unique sequence depending on the share if you wanted to tag them as social promoter and then maybe like Twitter user and then social promoter Facebook share. Um, but here's how this works. It's actually really simple. I'm going to double click on this goal. And the question is, what link in this email is the Twitter share? Well, it's this one. So if they go ahead and click on that tweet, it's going to satisfy this goal and then pop them in here and they get tagged. Same thing with the Facebook share and then same thing with the Google Plus share. So I just want to point out that uh, on the campaign here, the only reason we have three goals is in case you wanted to track those separately. If you wanted to have a different sequence for Twitter, for Facebook, or for Google. You could, you could totally use one goal and track all three of those links. You don't need separate goals there. But we broke them out just to kind of emphasize, if you do want different actions to result when they, when they share it on Twitter or if they share it on Facebook, if you want to segment that audience, speak to them a little differently, thank them specifically for which network they shared it on, you would break it out uh, using the kind of goal structure we have here. Exactly. So to, to do that, you know, um, tag social promoter uh, and Twitter user, and that should be it. That should be a plus sign, you know. And then I could go ahead and do the same thing and say, okay, but now this is a Facebook user, so it's the exact same. And since we're on the mastermind, let me show you how exactly how you just watched me clone this, and it actually cloned, it'll clone whatever's in here. This is an awesome pro tip, and it's a great way to save time. Uh, if you're on a PC, you would select it like it is now. You know it's selected if it has a little X here. You hold control and then you click and drag, and it'll drag out a little uh, dotted line version of it. When you let go, it makes a copy of whatever's in there. So if this had a bunch of emails in here, it would, it would take a, a couple of seconds, but it would make a complete copy of everything. Um, if you're on a Mac, you have to click and hold first, and then press control and drag. So it just takes a little bit getting used to that uh, keystrokes, um, but that's a huge time saver. And this works inside the sequence as well, not just on the campaign map. So if you're, if you're replicating a process inside the sequence and you want, you know, we've got a line of an email timer, email timer, and you want to repeat that process, real easy, saves you a lot of time if you clone that instead of just dragging them out to over and over. Absolutely. And you can also clone whole, uh, whole structures too. So let's say this is my, my newsletter broadcast for November, and then I want to clone it for December. Well, I can just go ahead and same thing. You see, it takes a little longer because there's more stuff to clone. But there you go. So that's a little pro tip here. And then you just update the content of your newsletter. You update those link click goals. Uh, but the follow-up is likely going to be pretty similar. If they're mm -hmm. sharing it uh, and you know you have that structure in place, you're still going to want to tag them. You might have an email in there 
thanking them or offering them a free gift for, for doing that. Mm -hmm. And you could even do something like this where after the tagging and the specific channel that they're using happens, then you've got your, you know, you know, general social share follow-up. So maybe you want to incentivize people. I've seen this a lot, you know, share this email and you know, I'll give you access to another video or a mm -hmm. free ebook. Uh, this is something that my cousin does. He's a DJ in Orlando and he emails his list, um, you know, basically, you know, MP3, audio files, you know, of, of music sets. And he gives people an incentive and says, hey, if you share this with your network, I'm going to send you some extra music. Um, so that's what, we, what Greg was talking about earlier when it's like give people a reason to share. Yeah, not only the incentive, um, but just the content itself. You want to make sure that you're making it uh, as easy as possible for them to get that word out. And then if people are spreading the word, what are we going to do with those people? Well, let's, let's, let's opt them in. Let's collect them here. So here's how to actually do this. And I just got a good question from Jerry that I want to answer now. The question is, why would you not put the incentive email in this first sequence when you tag them? You absolutely can. There's lots of ways to skin a digital cat here. The reason I'd recommend this is because if I put the email in here, that's three instances of the same email. So if I want to change anything about that email, I have to make that change three times. Where if the only thing that this does is tag them and then it flows into the general sequence, this is one instance of the email. So if I want to make any changes, you know, it's just one. Now, of course, this could say, hey, thanks for sharing it on Twitter. Here's your gift. You know, thanks for sharing it on Facebook. You know, there's not really a right or a wrong way to do it. Um, but I guess that's the reasoning behind why I would pack it all into one sequence rather than have basically the same email in three Let, places. Less moving parts, less to keep track of. It streamlines it so you only have one place to update when you want to make changes. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, and we were talking how you don't have to use three separate goals here. You can just have a single link click goal, and you can say that if they click on any of these, you know, that works. Um, so let's talk about that opt-in form, huh? So here is the form. Before, before you add it to an email, um, I do suggest building it out like we've got here. So mm -hmm. structure the form um, first so that when you go to add it to an email, you have it available as an option. Yeah, and I believe in order to to use the social form, it actually has to be published first, so it shows up on the list of available forms. That's a good point. Yep. Um, so you want to talk to people directly about this. Again, this is only going to show up if people click a link that their friend shared from their inbox, basically. So this can be really personal if you really want to one. Yeah, the point is you know a lot about them at that point. You can be really specific because you know that they have, they're viewing content that somebody in their network has shared when they received it from you. So you can really tailor your copy here to reflect the things you know about them and, and kind of speak to them a little bit more um, specifically. Absolutely. Do, do you have a picture of your face in here anywhere? Um, mm, probably. Is it maybe your signature? That would just be the, the whole thing, but yeah. Okay, well, um, okay, that's fine. We'll use this for right now. Uh, Go ahead and pretend that this is just Greg's face for right. And actually, you know what? I want to. Do you do you have? Can we steal that off of Facebook or something sure. or, yeah. or, or Twitter? Uh, here we're gonna steal. A, actually, I saw a really dapper smiling photo of Greg right here. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Super <Look> dapper. At that. <laughs> All right, cool. So I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna put this image in here, and and it's gonna make sense why in, in just a second because we want to be. Um, talking to them directly. There you go. So perfect. And then what we'll do is we can make this uh, a little smaller. That's uh, sitting on the Arno in uh, Florence, Italy, for those of you wondering. Oh, nice. That's why I look like such a cheese ball. <laughs> it's over there where the, the wine flows like beer or whatever the, the old saying is. Something like that. Um, so I like to use this social form as an opportunity to talk to people, you know, so something like, you know, hey, social media friend, you know, I'm Greg, and, you know, if you like the content your friend decided to share, you know, and like to see if you just sign yourself up, you know, and I would say something like, you know, below, 
and uh, then let's make this a little smaller so it's not so so it's not so crazy. Yeah, one thing you probably would want to use maybe a little smaller photo in this example, but uh, but I think that that gives you the idea. So now um, we're going to go ahead and publish this, and then we'll see what it looks like in the email. What one thing you're probably noticing is that um, we are being a little bit more uh, personal, a little bit more humanizing on on a form like this because you have to consider your friend or your friend's friend in this case is going to be viewing this while they're while they're somewhere on their social networks. So you know they're not they're not choosing to come to your to your uh, to your website or to your blog. You're going to be showing up in their news feed or in their uh, Twitter feed or somewhere you know where you're competing with friends and family and that sort of thing. So I, I do take a slightly different approach on on the copy and on the imagery that I choose here. I do like to make it a little bit more personal, a little bit more engaging. Um, and what Paul's done with a, a candid photo and uh, <laughs> and some some friendly verbiage, I think, is a is a great uh, a great idea there. Absolutely, uh, especially when you look at the two side to side, because it's all about that customer experience, that experience here. And then I don't think we did anything for the thank you page because we're just setting this up. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to open this email up, and we're going to go to the email itself. And now in layout and style. So what I'm going to do is, you see, I've turned social share form on. So first time you turn it on, it's just going to be blank, and it's going to say, "Hey, what form do you want to use?" If you only have like ten or so yeah. forms in your whole application, you'll get a drop-down list. Otherwise, it's a type of search. Um, social but you want to go form. ahead and select it. Social share form. You can choose the position left or right. And then if you actually want to see what it's going to look like, you can preview it. But because we haven't published, it's probably going to preview using the old uh, setup. Yeah. So, yeah. It, so it, let me it looks the way that that, that form point. looked initially. Um, that's a good point, though. Yeah. It's going to show you whatever is like published live. So if we hop back in here and preview this email, you should see my smiling face uh, sitting right next to that email. Sure enough. There you go. So this is that experience people are going to get. They, they click somewhere from their friend's feed. They read this email here, and then, hey, I want to send you this too. And I'd probably say something besides yeah. submit. Submit is hey. just about the worst thing you can say yeah. on a web form. Submitting is so boring. I'm breaking my own rule there. <laughs> That's okay, though. You, you know the old joke about, uh, about Chuck Norris there? No. So um, <laughs> if your target audience is Chuck Norris, then you don't want to say submit there because Chuck Norris will never submit. <laughs> I have zero conversions on this page. <laughs> Who's your traffic source? <laughs> Chuck Norris. Well, there you go. That's yeah. why. So non sequiturs aside, this is how it looks, and this is a really, really powerful tool. And then, of course, because it is its own unique form, you can have a welcome specifically for them. So maybe it's your general welcome that you use whenever anyone signs up to your normal newsletter, except it specifically talks about the fact that they came from social, you know, because, again, it's just all about building relationships with people. Yeah, and, and another point on that is um, you, you know which email you're attaching that form to. Mm -hmm. So if you build a general one, you can include it in as many emails as you want. But if you have a, a sequence that builds on itself, and you have maybe three videos over the course of three weeks, and you're encouraging people to share those, it might make sense to build a separate social sharing form for each email so that you can say, hey, your friend shared video two. If you want to get caught up, opt in today, and I'll send you videos one and two and get you on track. So you can speak really specifically because you not only know that they're viewing one of your pieces of content, but you know that which piece of content they're viewing, you chose which email to associate that form with. Now, you certainly don't have to get that granular with it, um, but yeah, you but see you've got a, a main opt-in, and then you might have a different opt-in for a couple different points of, of your content. Video one, exactly. Totally. And and this is a mastermind call, so let's just pour it on, man. Why, uh, you know, if this was like day one of Infusion Year or something, maybe, but... I think I think we can I think they can handle it. I don't hey, think this Paul, is too much. Fun. Don't you discredit an infusion yet? Okay? <laughs> I'm not discrediting we, at all. We cover a lot of good stuff there too. Um, but we don't usually get this deep. Uh, and Paul's got a very good point. Yeah, so you can see we've got video one, video two, video three share, all feeding into the same sequence here. 
um, but you might choose to break it out differently if you knew that when they're opting in you needed to speak to them a little differently or you wanted to deliver some but not all the content or at a different rate. Uh, the point that he's making is is basically you if you know when they're opting in, use that information. Yeah, absolutely, especially in the example like a video series, so especially if the videos build on each other. So maybe video two is referencing stuff they learned in video one. Well, if someone shares the video two email, this particular forum can say, hey, what's going on, buddy? Um, this video is talking about da-da-da-da, which we actually handled in part one. I'd love to send you part one right now. Just yeah. sign up below. And then video three, hey, this is the last video in the series. You've actually missed the two before then. I'd love to send you all of them, you know, so you have your own copy. Go ahead and sign up below. Um, and on the first one, maybe it's something as simple as, hey, it looks like your friend just started this three-video series. If you want to, you know, get the videos along with them, go ahead and get video one now, and you'll both get two and three at the same time. And, and I should say at this point that uh, when, whenever, whenever anyone's opting into your list, the expectations that you set are, of course, really important. Uh, this is no different. So when somebody's opting in, if you're promising them video one, Make sure you're giving them not only what you promise, but you're being clear that you're not giving them also all of my promotional emails, also all of my you know JV and uh, affiliate marketing emails. If you want to send them that sort of thing, that's fine. But you need to send that, you need to set that expectation so they know when they sign up. Hey, you're signing it, you're opting into all of my list. Mm -hmm. Totally. Uh, and you could even put check boxes on here. So mm -hmm. maybe let them choose. Yeah, let them Why choose not? what they want. I'm definitely going to send you the videos, and if you want, you can also get my newsletter too. Bingo. Um, so I got a quick question here about the traffic sources here. These aren't functional at all. The, these are just here for the symbolism. But, but, but that doesn't mean that they're useless. So they don't do anything, but they still serve a purpose in the sense that it's useful because it shows you where your traffic is coming from. It's an internal reminder is what I like to say. Yeah, for sure, especially if you're getting more complex campaigns. It, it can get a little confusing, you know, how are people getting here? So these are definitely really helpful, so I'd recommend using them. Um, but totally non-functional. Yeah, they're not functional, at least not yet. Um, so That was a little foreshadowing there, Paul. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, talking about rewarding people off of social share, really, it's just the same thing we did, you know, last time. We would have social snippets in these three emails if anybody here so let me actually pull in what what's this campaign this is uh M -M social share capture there you go and then oh yeah broadcast sequence there you go so that's another really cool little pro tip here you can actually copy whole sequences from other campaigns uh, and so I just that save myself a little bit of time so Oh, yeah, this is the video, right? So so let's pretend it's video one, and then we have a little delay timer. So this is what Greg was talking about earlier about saving time here. I'm going to just go ahead and clone this twice, and then I've got a three-video series, and I just have to, you know, modify these. Modify the copy, modify the video it's linking out to, but all of your shares are in there, your signature's all set up, the formatting's going to be consistent that way. Um, mm -hmm. It definitely will save you a lot of time doing that. Yep, yep. Probably could do a mastermind call on just cloning and copying. I'm sure we could. So we want to do for any share, like let, let's say we're giving people a gift if they share. So we can say, all right, if they click any of these links in the first email, we know they're sharing it. If they click anything in the second email, we know they're sharing it. If they click anything in the third email, same thing. And then we can send them a gift or something. And a point that I want to make here is um, if you have three videos about three totally different topics, well, maybe you, maybe you don't want to reward them all the same. Maybe depending on which one they shared, they're telling you which one was most interesting to them. You might want to break this out so that you're engaging or you're interacting with those emails differently. You're rewarding them depending on what they shared. And then maybe you're tagging them for further segmentation about which email they were most uh, engaged by. That, that's a really good idea, Greg. I mean, if it's a three-video series have a unique gift for each one, you know, because... Something that's specific to what they shared, yeah. Yeah, if you share video one, I'm going to give you this little PDF which tells you how to do what you did in, you know, video one. Video two talks about a phone script, so if you share this, I'll send you my phone script, you know, whatever. And that way people have a reason to share every single time, not just, in general, share this, we'll give you a gift. And, and again, this is a mastermind call, so we're, we're taking it to that next level. Um, if you don't have any of these pieces in place, 
I would recommend starting with something like this. Starting with just thanking people and rewarding them for sharing. And then when you have time, break it out and get a little bit more specific, get a little bit more targeted with what gifts you're giving. But put something in place first. I always say version version uh, one is better than version none. Mm -hmm. As long as every, all the pieces are in version one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're good. Uh, I'm getting a question about the cloning and copying again. I, I'm going to cover this again just because I, it's such a powerful skill to have because uh, you can just really quickly build stuff out. So it depends on what operating system you're on. If you're on, uh, in all cases, you start by selecting whatever you want. If you're on a PC, you're going to hold, so I'm going to hold control, and then I'm going to click and drag, and I get this little uh, dotted box when I let go it makes a copy of whatever it is. And again, depending on how many things you're copying, it takes a little time. If you are on a Mac, you have to click and hold, don't move your mouse yet, then you press control and drag. Um, so basically, if you're on a PC, hold control first, click and drag. If you're on a Mac, click first, then hold control, and then drag. Bingo. So um, it takes a little bit of practice, but once you get it down, you know, you'll be, you'll be good to go. Um, I mean, okay. I, have we beaten this social shared dead horse in the I, ground? I, I think that's good. Um, my <laughs> question, Paul, and I know you've got an answer up your sleeve for this. Um, so what if you want to encourage them to start some dialogue about a piece of your content? Maybe you're giving them proprietary content, and you don't necessarily want them to share the content, but you want them to talk about it. So you want to encourage them to begin a discussion or tweet about how much they learned or what they enjoyed or you know that sort of thing. What do you got for me there? Well, you're talking about that ninja trick that we talked about earlier, right? That's right. Okay. It's in the first email if you want to open that up. Should we, should we, should we, should we tell them? Let's do it. Okay. So th this is actually a really cool tool. It's the ability to create a link that will pre-populate a tweet for you. So, you know, so tell everyone you know how much you learned from us today. Um, it's this Twitter link, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy it. You can see it's the big nasty chunk of text. But what it does is it pre-populates a tweet for you. So if you do not want people to share the whole email, we're going to give you a tool that allows you to create this type of stuff. So um, you can use this for sharing a quote. You can use this to have people promote a landing page. I mean, yeah. Or if you have, uh, you know, if you have a bunch of articles in a, a newsletter or something like that, and you want to encourage them to talk about one of them, or if you're if you're selling a product uh, and maybe you want people three weeks after they've uh, filled out your satisfaction survey, you want to <clears throat> encourage them to tell people how much they enjoy your product. Well, you can you can pre-populate a tweet for them. Uh, with the the hashtag of your your product or the the at symbol the the mention for your company, um, you know you can really frame it up using the right keywords to to kind of match those together. It's a it's an invaluable tool. And the first time I saw this, I was kind of blown away. Like how did they how did they force force tweet me or force me to tweet <laughs> something? Um, and really, it's not a, it's not forcing. That's not fair. But it is encouraging them to share a specific comment about a specific article or a specific component. Um, everything we've talked about to this point has been basically share this piece of content, this entire thing, but if you want to get granular and encourage them to talk about a specific component, um, that's a great way to start some more dialogue, raise your brand awareness, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So the, the article example, let's say you got some article here and then people can share, maybe this is like a part of a blog, yeah. maybe it's the intro to a blog post and people can click to read the whole thing. You can say, hey, why don't you share this article on Twitter? And, and we're going to give you a tool in a second that allows you to create a link that would say, hey, I just read, you know, this specific article and then linking to it. And then if they share the second article on Twitter, it's going to have a link to the second blog post. Um, so let's, let's give them that tool because it's, it's pretty handy. Want to hop back into the slides? Nope. All cool. Right. So we, we've taken the escalator from the ground floor up to awesome level. <laughs> Uh, so this is that link that we showed you guys uh, that pre-populates that tweet. Um, it's kind of a hot mess, to yeah, say the least. it's kind of gross. Only computers can read it. <laughs> um, but all it's really doing is taking them to Twitter.com and then pre-populating uh, the, the information that you preset. 
such as your handle, your hashtags, your comments, whatever else you want to put into there. And you can kind of pick those items out. You can see it's got VIA Infusionsoft and the IS Mastermind hashtag in there. Um, but we certainly don't expect you to uh, to really just sit down at a, at a table and start writing these out. I know it's a little bit more complex. There's probably a handful of people on the call who are like, yep, I'm good. I got everything I need. Right, but. yeah, they're reading that and they know what all the, the uh -huh. percent and spaces are. So we found a really, really cool tool for this. And here's the link for it. And I'm going to go ahead and take you to it. Uh, we're going to be tweeting this link out, and uh, yeah, actually, if you look at our Twitter feed, I think that link is out there already. I think mine's 9:50, so we're sitting right about there. Yeah, um, should be going out any moment now. Yeah, but if you if you type in insft.co/slash Twitter intent, um, what you'll see is it takes you to a tool uh, that allows you to basically build um, build the types of links we're talking about. You want to show them, Paul? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Uh, let's just go to the main Twitter. Probably have to sign you in. Oh, that's it's fine. Wrong. Well, are you are you are you following your other? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Cool. So there you go. Infusionsoft Twitter intent. So look at that. Um, so this is the intent creator that we found. This isn't our tool. It's not an Infusionsoft tool. It's just something I googled it because I I needed this. Yeah. I don't know a couple months ago, and it's so handy to have in your back pocket. That's a good point. We don't we don't support this. We're not getting commission off of driving people there. It's a free tool. We just uh, thought you guys should be aware of it. Put it in your back pocket. Yeah. It's really, really awesome. So uh, the tweet text here, this is the only required piece here. So um, um, so if we're using the article, you know, check out this awesome article on, it's Halloween today. So let's say, you know, on. Oh, yeah. Happy Halloween, everyone. Yep. Um, <laughs> funny, you know, when you're kids, this is like a huge to do. And then, yeah. you know, as adults, you're like, oh, hey, it's Thursday. Huh. How about that? I imagine there's like a, a sign wave with how with importance of Halloween there's probably it's really important it's like an inverted bell curve it's really important when you're young <laughs> and then you kind of it gets less important and then it gets more important as you have kids and then probably after that it gets less important again yep and then when you're like you know a, a senior citizen it's really important again because you know why not sure well, uh, I'll do it. <laughs> so we don't we do, I'm not putting anything here in the URL the V or the hashtags because you don't really have to because I can I can put my own hashtag in here I can call out, you know, whatever I want, assuming I use an at symbol. But when you generate, this gives you a link. Yeah. And then this is what you can link to inside an email. So if I go here, there you go. Check out this awesome article on Halloween. Obviously, this is a fake you know, URL. What? Um, yeah, I would have never guessed that. I love mywebsite.com. <laughs> they write the best stuff. They do, especially their first article. <laughs> Um, so you can have this one, and then maybe for the second article, it's talking about, I, I don't even know, mastermind calls. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's article two. You know? So you can give people stuff to tweet, and it doesn't have to be linking anywhere. Um, I've seen this in Chris Brogan's newsletter a handful of times and some other, yeah, some other uh, in, uh, in, influential guys where they'll have a really awesome quote, like, um, you know, in the... When the student is ready, you know, the teacher will appear. And let's just say that, you know, that was me. So here's the link. And if you wanted to make it a quote clearly, it'd be a quote. But then this is how you would use it in an email. So, of course, here's the link. You know, that's what it looks like. Uh, and if I was doing this for real, I'd, I'd probably put a link, you know, to whatever my, you know, my website, you know, opt-in, whatever. But in the email itself... You certainly don't have to, though. You don't have to. Yeah. In, in the email, you don't have to. But I usually see it something like this, you know. Um, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And then they have like a, you know, tweet, you know, tweet this. And then we just link that to that, to that link. Yeah, so all it's doing is it's generating um, it's generating a URL and it's encoded the pieces that are going to pre-populate there. So that's why you see the um, the percentage symbol and the Good two call. zero and the four zero. What's that? I was thinking Alan made a great suggestion. He said, "Why don't you say click to tweet?" And that's a great point. You really do want to spell out click Here's here what to you tweet do. this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, so I mean, I think we've. Yeah, yeah that's, done. that's about all the content we've got in here. We're just about at the top of the hour. So let's do this, Paul. Let's, um, 
you know, let's see what we got on that last slide. I think we'd, yeah. I think so we yeah, basically revisit um, our handles there, Voyix and Infusion Greg. Um, both of us, you know, super, super passionate about small business. I love hearing your success stories, uh, but I also don't mind, you know, helping out if you have some questions here and there. Um, you know, just get at us, uh, you know, using either of those handles. For now, let's go ahead and uh, throw up a survey for them. And Paul and I will take a minute to comb through the uh, questions. And we can take a look at what we've got, and uh, we will circle back. We'll give you a few moments here to do this to do this survey, and then we will stick around for another 10 or 15 and answer whatever questions have come in. So you should be seeing um, a survey here. We're going to comb through these questions. We'll give you guys a, a moment or two to, to take that, and then we'll hop into some of them. Once I close the poll, guys, I've got the slide up that has the link to that Twitter intent one. Uh, and we're just going to take these calls in uh, you know, first in, first out order. So let's see what we've got. No, we're not muted. So, cool. So, a couple people had commented about LinkedIn, um, and I do want to address that. Uh, Infusionsoft doesn't have a native integration with LinkedIn right now. Uh, it's definitely been discussed, and it's on the roadmap. At some point, I fully expect that you'll be able to share content that way, but certainly don't have an estimated uh, um, release for that. I do want to also say that you may have noticed in the Mastermind email uh, today uh, was part one of two. So. Um, what that means is, and we're going to go ahead and close that poll up. It looks like we've got all the votes in, so I appreciate that. Um, part one of two, th today was basically tools. Uh, we do have a, another call scheduled. Um, I think it's going to be two weeks from now uh, where we're going to dive in a little bit deeper on strategy for social media. So we are going to bring in a LinkedIn-specific expert. Um, so stay tuned to the Mastermind calls because we will have one there uh, where we get in a little bit deeper on some strategies for LinkedIn and a few of the other uh, social platforms. Mm -hmm. Let's see what other questions we got here. Right, let's continue on here. A lot of people telling us you lost the audio. Thank, thanks for engaging and letting us know, guys. Um, part of the fun of doing stuff live. All right, so uh, this is a really good question uh, from Susan. Is, is this going to be in the marketplace eventually, or is it already there? Um, it's already in your software, but as far as creating a campaign for that, you know, that's a really good idea. I think that would give more visibility into this tool. And you know what, Susan? Next month, the campaign of the month is for generating referrals. And this is a great way to generate referrals. So thank you very much. I think that's what we're going to build. So a little, little golf clap for that. Yep. And Susan had another question here about, is it possible to follow more than one Facebook page or Twitter account? I believe we addressed that. Um, if you include the snippet more than once, you can uh, direct them to follow multiple, either personal or business handle, that sort of thing. No problem there. So hopefully you got that resolved. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we talked about why we put the incentive email in one sequence as opposed to the other three. That's just to manage stuff easier. Um, this is a great question from Steve. He says, are the Infusionsoft emails responsive? The answer is not yet. Um, product development is definitely aware that responsive is the next big thing that needs to happen. And then they're already starting to work on, on how to make that uh, a reality. So it will be. And uh, so keep an eye out. Yeah. And I uh, got a question here from Ramona. Uh, thanks for joining us. We met uh, a couple months back. Uh, good to see you. Uh, are you recommending doing newsletters from campaign or still using it in a broadcast? And that's a tough one. Um, we're certainly we're certainly not saying to abandon the broadcast tool because uh, you know there is some some value there. What we are saying is that when you broadcast, you shouldn't view it as an isolated step. And if you're considering what you're going to do as far as follow up, then you know we showed you two methods: in the broadcast builder, but also just creating a campaign to send out that email so that you can visualize, okay, here's my social share form, here's where the follow-up lives. For a lot of people, uh, that's an easier way to think about it. So 
We're certainly not saying one is uh, obsolete or anything like that. Uh, we're just showing you another tool for your tool belt. And you know, that's a good point. Let's show people how to, you know, quote, send that particular broadcaster, because I don't think we've covered that, and, oh, yeah. and it may not be really obvious here, <laughs> especially because, you notice there's no goal in front of this. So how do people get in here? Um, it's pretty, pretty simple. Uh, you would do a contact search for your newsletter list, you know, whoever. And then down here under the actions, you have start, stop a campaign sequence. So if you have a broadcast uh, living in a campaign sequence, um, you could funnel a, any selected group using this option here, just manually start them off in that sequence, right? Yeah, and that's pretty much you know how you would send the newsletter effectively. Um, so thanks for pointing that out because that, that isn't, again, it's not like super obvious. Susan, Susan brought up, hey, would you have an email confirmation sequence to get the double opt-in? Um, and, and yeah, we do recommend uh, having a double opt-in. I think she's talking about when somebody opts in from social media, would you want to confirm them uh, and send them a double opt-in, make sure that they gave you that email address, et cetera. That's always a best practice. Uh, it, it, it does help with, uh, you know, making sure your emails get delivered. And, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of a, it's an extra step. But I think that the, the end result is you end up with a list that is more engaged and a little bit cleaner in general. Totally. And you don't have to make the confirmation required. You can send it out, but you can still tag them and add them to whatever newsletter lists or whatever they're getting. You know, it's, it is recommended, though. It, it definitely helps out. And it shows that they're engaged. Um, you really want to have a good, nice, engaged list. So if you are going to have people double opt-in, make sure that on the thank you page of the web form, you explicitly tell people, hey, you've been added to the newsletter list please confirm your email and maybe even have a little screenshot of like what the subject line, you know, is going to look like in their, uh, in, in their inbox. So Michael's asking how Paul got so good at the campaign builder. Um, well, he's the uh, campaign builder mad scientist. So he lives <laughs> in it and we let him out once in a while to interact with the public, but essentially that's his home. Yeah, pretty much. They, you know, they, they put me on a leash and, and walk me around and, uh, no, not really, though. <laughs> we are getting some feedback here. You guys rock. Great info. Uh, a lot of positive comments, so I appreciate that. That's always good for us to hear. Um, you know, these calls are a bunch of fun, but obviously we do them we do them to benefit you guys, so we want to make sure that we're providing a lot of value as well. Yeah, and I'm seeing a lot more people talking about adding something like this in the marketplace. You guys got it. You know, I we do not have, we know that the, the I guess it would be November campaign of the month, is going to be something about getting referrals. We don't know exactly what it is, but it sounds like people want it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Thanks to everyone that's made that suggestion. You have literally directly impacted what's going to be in the marketplace. So when that drops, uh, you know, it'll probably maybe the second or third week in November to be in the marketplace. You should be very delighted. Susan commented that this was uh, this webinar was a perfect fit for her needs. She's got a three video series coming up, and she's pretty excited about the way this is going to go. My comment is, I would love to hear it. Let us know. You know, shout out, uh, give us a, a tweet, and let us know how it goes when you launch, or what your results you're seeing are. We love, we love hanging our hats on on little wins like that. So uh, keep it up. Good luck. Okay. Um, n n we do have people saying, hey, there's a gross social question. Is now not the time? Um, maybe at the very end, Christina, if you want to hang out. Um, Brenda, it looks like you, you got a 404 page. Yeah. I don't know if you maybe want to tell us exactly what link gave us that 404. We can fix that. Um, someone's asking, what do you mean by responsive? Uh, a responsive is when uh, the web page adjusts to the screen size. So if you go to like Microsoft.com or something and then you take your browser window and you make it smaller, you'll actually see the page move around or respond to the size of, uh, of the screen. So that's what we mean when we say responsive. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we, we had some feedback that the mic was getting quieter. Hopefully it's better now. Uh, Brenda also indicated that that link she was having difficulty with uh, is now working, so I appreciate oh, that. Thanks, Brenda. Um, this is a little side question from Jillian, but it's a real easy answer, and I think you're going to be very happy. The question is, is there a way to change all tasks from one person or a former employee to a new one? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Let's go ahead and show you how to do that. Um, Jillian, I hope you're enjoying Texas as well. She moved there recently, I believe. Oh, nice. So do you, do you have tasks in here, Greg? Okay. 
uh, in the future? No. Oh, I don't. Um, I don't think I have. Any I've. Uh, yeah. Here, let me uh, let me hop into basic sales demo because we use. Uh, we my use my mistake. Here. I mixed her up where I knew her from. She was in Orlando. That's it. Oh, okay. Woo, Orlando, go Knights! I uh, I'm coming from UCF, you know. <laughs> okay, so reassigning the tasks, right? Um, here's how I'd recommend doing it: go to your admin reports, uh, do a task note report, and go ahead and find tasks that are incomplete. Uh, and for this example, I'm just going to say all. So here's all these tasks, right? On this dropdown, you can reassign tasks. And so I can say, you know, either give them all to a round robin or to a person, or I can hard code it. So that, that's how you do it. Uh, again, the way that we got here is we went to admin task note report. We did the search for the task we wanted. So if it's a specific user, you can say, show me tasks that were specifically assigned to this person. Um, and then you can, you know, again, reassign it in mass from here. So I hope that helps, Jillian. Perfect. Uh, we got some more positive feedback in here. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. JD asked about um, asked about this being recorded and said, "Will it be posted?" Yeah. No, I'm sorry uh, you missed out on on joining us in live time, uh, but we did record it. And uh, as soon as we get that converted, if, if there aren't any issues, we'll get that posted up to the Mastermind Archive. So mm -hmm. no worries there. Um, barring any, any issues with the conversion process, we should have that posted in the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually about 48 hours. So thanks for joining us, JD. Uh, we're doing a little Q&A right now. Um, Ramona has got a great question, and, and I'm excited to, for both of us to answer this. Can you give me a civilized argument that I can bring to my team leader for not including the newsletter by default with the free magnet? So what she's basically saying is oh. when somebody opts in for something, why would we not just want to assume they want the newsletter? What, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that, Greg? So the civilized argument is um, they didn't ask for it. Uh, you, you know, so therefore, you don't have their permission to email them the, the, your newsletter. They said, hey, I want your, your magnet. And whatever that magnet was, you now have permission to deliver it to them. If you include a checkbox that says also include me on your newsletter, or if you even include the verbiage, by signing up today, I will also include you in my next newsletter. Um, then, yeah, you can send them the newsletter. But by default, that's not a permission you have. Um, you have to request that, and they have to actually say, yeah, uh, you can send me both. And here's what I would suggest. Um, if you're sending everybody your newsletter, then you're not really using information about them. Y they haven't really told you what they're interested in. You're just sending it to them. But if you wait until they say, you know what, I would also like your newsletter, and I would also like your promotional emails. They're self-segmenting, and it's kind of a measure of engagement as well. Absolutely, and I think the, the, the civil answer is it's, ju it's just about being respectful to the inbox relationship and setting expectations. And, and if it helps, make the argument with your pinky out. Um, I found that as far <laughs> as coming across civilized goes, that's a, that's a good way to, to position yourself. Yes, the, the pinky is always super fancy. Um, but it's just about that relationship, you know, like he said, if I'm opting in for video series, all I want is your video series. If I like what you have, trust me, I'm going to make my way onto your newsletter, you know, organically. Um, but, you know, there's no harm in putting a checkbox, which is asking for that, um, you know, or just clearly stating, hey, I'm also going to add you to my newsletter. Uh, again, it's just about those expectations. You know, that, that's really it. We want to respect everybody's inbox, especially nowadays. Um, it's getting harder to, to snag people's attention. So what's the point in adding everyone to the newsletter if your engagement rate is super low anyway because they didn't want it in the first place? Hope that helps. Perfect. Um, got a couple comments here talking about, we mentioned Chris Brogan. Uh, Alan says, hey, Chris uses click to tweet W, or it's just uh, HTTP, click to tweet.com, and that's T-O, not the number two, click to tweet. I've never checked that site out. Um, it sounds like it's comparable. Click to tweet allows you to customize your message that goes out to Twitter. So, yeah, another similar tool, another option to, to keep in your back pocket. Nice. So, just going to keep going through these questions. We're almost at the end. Thanks to everybody that's still hanging out with us. Um, okay, so Jillian's got a customer hub question here. So, it's kind of grab bag Q&A at this it. point. Why Let's not, right? Uh, and I'll let you take this one, Greg, because you're more of a customer hub than okay. me. 
are the inbox folders unique to the logged in user? I want to put certain emails for certain people to look at in a folder, but the ones I see when I log in are different than another user. So um, if you want to clarify for me, Jillian, uh, that would help. What I think you're talking about is the file box um, in Customer Hub. And the answer to that is uh, any document uh, you upload to Customer Hub. Uh, Customer Hub is our membership platform, by the way. Um, you can check it out at customerhub.net. It is an additional cost, but if you have a membership need, it's, it's uh, one, of, one of the good solutions out there. Um, and if you, yeah, so if you upload files there, you can share it with your members, and when they log in, they, by default, are going to see everything in that file box that they have permission to view. Now, what you can do is you can set different permission levels as you upload files. So if you're uploading email templates or PDFs or videos, you can permiss those individual items at a certain level, and then when that client uh, logs in, or when that customer logs in, based on the tags they have in Infusionsoft, they're only going to see the items that they have permission to see. So you do have to be deliberate when you set up your tag structure, um, and you could, I mean, you could potentially have one tag for Paul and have Paul's content if you, if you had a small group and you wanted to only allow Paul access to those emails. But what's more likely is you'll have a members tag and a prospects tag and that sort of thing, and then you'll have a a set of content available to those individuals. And and I think that um, that's all that's all valid, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, she's clarifying a little bit. I guess you're talking about the support emails inbox. I think that is unique. If it works anything like the uh, how the inbox feature inside Infusionsoft works, I'm pretty sure that the folders are um, unique per user. Just kind of kind of like you know your regular email inbox, you know. Yeah, feel, feel free to follow up with me offline there, Jillian, and uh, and it, we'll dig in a little bit deeper if we didn't get what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's it. There's no more questions, right? Um, yeah, no, it looks like looks like everyone's all set. If we missed anything, we will circle back on these, and feel free to, again, uh, you know, give us a shout-out on Twitter. Let us know um, if we left something open-ended, or just let us know what you thought about today. Thanks, uh, everyone, for joining us. This was a bunch of fun. It was. Have an excellent Thursday, and the next time you send anything, make sure it's got some social snippets in there, and you can start organically building your list through your extended social network. Bingo. Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy. Be safe.